Good morning, friends. So we'll start today. Guidelines for material verification program (MVP) for new and existing assets. API recommended practice five seventy eight. Third, this way you can correct, uh, or I can supply if you want the correct. Then you mark it. Scope. Purpose. The purpose of recommended practice RP is to provide guidelines for owner user to develop and implement a material verification program MVP as part of an asset integrity program. About this document, recommended practice provides guidelines for material verification program involving ferrous and non-ferrous alloys during construction, installation, maintenance, and inspection in new and existing process equipment. Material verification program of a new and existing alloy piping system. Terms and definition. Alloy material, any metallic material including welding or filler metal that contains alloying elements such as chromium, nickel, molybdenum that are intentionally added to enhance the mechanical physical properties and or corrosion resistance. Alloy may be ferrous or non-ferrous. Inspection lot. A group of items or materials of the same type from a common source from which sample is to be drawn for examination. Material non-conformance. A positive material identification. The result that doesn't conform with the material specified. Positive material identification, PMI. The physical evaluation of the test of material performed to confirm that the material that has been or will be Placed into service is consistent with what is specified by owner user. This evaluation or test may provide either qualitative or quantitative information that are sufficient to verify the composition. Random selection process by which choice are made in an arbitrary and unbiased manner. Consideration and general concerns. Carbon steel substitution in low alloy system. Steel systems. When considering the likelihood of material non-conformance, the worth noting that historically the greatest number of material non-conformances with serious consequences have involved placing unapproved carbon steel components into low alloy steels. 1.25 chrome and half half moly, 2 2.25 chrome, 1 moly, 5 chrome, half moly. 9 chrome 1 moly piping system. The alloy substitution for carbon steel. Examples of such system include those welding wet hydrogen sulfide H2S2, H2S, hydrofluoric, hydrofluoric acid HF, and sulfuric acid H2SO4. Alloy 400 and HF alkali in service. The substitution of non stabilized grade of stainless steel for stabilized grade of high temperature service or substitution of type 304 SS for type 316 SS whether molybdenum content is important for corrosion resistance. Material verification programs general the owner user shall establish the written material verification program indicating the extent and types of PMI to be con conducted during the construction of new assets. Retroactively on existing assets and during the maintenance, repair, and alteration of existing asset for a higher risk system, the owner user should consider the need for employing higher extent in process and final examination up to 100% rather than random sampling, which may be more appropriate for lower risk system. The owner user should also consider the need to conduct examination after fabrication is complete at the point of installation to provide assurance that the inadvertent substitution did not occur. <coughs> Asset components included in a material verification program. Mill test reports and uses of MVP. Mill test reports should not be considered substitute of PMI because these type of documents have historically not always been accurate. However, mill tests reports are an important part of overall material quality assurance program.
material verification test procedure review. The owner user or designee should review the approved material verification program in the testing process and the testing procedures or procedure of the fabricator, material supplier, or third party agency prior to testing. PMI of components supplied by distributor. Higher degree of PMI should be conducted on material supplied by stocking distributors due to the potential of unapproved material substitutions as a result of frequent handling of member parties. PMI methodology and technology. The primary method include portable spectroscopy and laboratory chemical analysis. MBB test method objective, identification of material by visual stamp marking alone should not be considered as substitute for PMI, but may an important, may be an important component of an overall quality assurance program. Personal qualification, persons performing PMI should be knowledgeable about the all aspect of operation of PMI equipment and the test method applied qualification of the personnel performing the test including training and experience should be submitted to the review and approval of the owner user. The owner user is responsible to assure that the all individual performing PMI are trained and qualified in uh, accordance with the applicable procedure used during the examination. Certification and qualification are two of the most effective methods to prove requirements are met. Chemical analysis technique, laboratory chemical analysis. Material analysis, uh, laboratories using X-ray emission spectrometry, optical uh, emission spectrometry or chemical. Analysis can provide the most accurate analytical results for all elements. Chemical spot testing. The chemical spot test is typically accomplished by electrochemically removing the minute amount of surface metal, depositing it onto mass ocean filter paper. A region dropped into the paper produced distinct colors that would indicate the presence of specified specific element in the sample tested. Chemical spot testing is much slower than the other field BMI method and interpretation is sub subjective. Spectrometer technology, portable X-ray fluorescence. As there are several types of portable X-ray fluorescence XRF spectrometers available. The principle of operation is that one or more gamma ray or X-ray source are used to generate a beam of low energy radiation to excite the material under analysis. The material under analysis then emits a characteristic radiation spectrum that can be analyzed both qualitatively and qualitatively quantitatively to determine which element are present and in what quantity. The inherent limitation of the technique means it is not possible to detect all elements XRF analyzer are capable of detecting elements from magnesium to uranium in the predictable that excludes some most important element in carbon steel such as carbon and boron. Important to define exactly what elemental analysis is required and select an appropriate instrument. Portable optical emission spectrometry. Optical emission spectrometry, OES, electric arc, spark laser stimulates uh, atoms in the first sample to emit a characteristic uh, spectrum of light. For each element in the sample, the combined light spectra from the different elements are passed through light guide to optical analyzer. In the analyzer, the light is dispersed into spectral components and then measured and evaluated against stored calibration curves. This device fall into three groups. The first is a lightweight portable and upper operator evaluated device that can typically identify up to 16 elements but depend on operator evaluation of the light spectra. This device do not directly indicate alloys grade or composition but produce an output in the form of visible light spectra that form is semi-qualitative alloy identification. The second group refers to field portable laboratory grade analyzer. The third group is known as laser induced breakdown spectrometry LIBS. 
in which atomic emission spectroscopy technique uses highly energetic laser pulses. Equipment calibrations. Person performing the PMI should calibrate and or verify the test equipment performance as specified by the equipment manufacturer. The PMI procedure should be provided the frequency interval for the calibration verification. PMI of welding consumables. PMI of weld caps doesn't uh, assure a root pass or subsequent weld pass are made with the specified chemistry. An acceptable method to add, address in process PMI during the welding is experience. Explain here, prior to the use of fabrication, sample buttons should be welded using each sheet of bare wire. Lot of covered electrodes and flux code electrodes. PMI can then be used to confirm that Weld metal meets, meets the specification. The size of weld button should have should be adequate to assure accurate test results. Some weld rods have the alloying elements contents in the flux and do not meet the alloy specification until welded. It is not necessary to test a button of bare wire if the test chosen. <coughs> you can identify the composition of the wire before welding. Longitudinal pipe and fitting welds. Where there is reason to sub suspect problems, longitudinally welded alloy pipe and fittings should receive PMI verification of the base metal and weld metal. Follow PMI after discovery in an, of an inconformity. If any one of the representative sample are rejected, all the items that inspection for should be considered suspect and more extensive inspection of the remaining lot should be considered material identification color coding by alloy a low stress stamp marking indicating that the test has been performed documentation showing both pmi results and pmi location color coding marking if the material verification program procedure established by owner user metric for say Visual identification such as color coding or marking, the owner user should maintain a record of the alloy material color code combination. Marking of components. If the owner user documentation procedure requires physical marking of equipment component, it should specify one of the following whether or not the marking system should remain legible for the expected life of the component without deterioration due to corrosion or elevated temperature, whether or not the marking system is only temporary or facilitate proper handling and identification from the point of PMI or to final installation. The marking can be semi-permanent paint applied to each item. The marker should not contain additives such as metallic pigment, aluminum, PB and zinc, uh, lead and zinc, sulfur and chloride. Thank you, gentlemen, and we'll stop here.